receive Apostle Russell in the care of the Holy Ghost. Receive the man of God. Amen. Citizens, 
we must go through to the word of God. Today the word is saying, the religion and the word is saying there is no ultimate truth. There are pastors, people that preach it that don't even believe the resurrection. But they are preaching. You know why? They are called hirelings. That's their job. But in the kingdom, we're doing this from the heart. Amen. We're doing it because we are called of God, God to do it. So we don't compromise. Amen. Amen. The word of God. We teach the word of God to the glory of God. Let's just stand and declare the word of God. Amen. Time is already gone. But you know what? To God for the glory. Amen. He is in control. Amen. Amen. But one word, one word can change a lot. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. This is the word of God. We live by the word. We die by the word. This is the word of God. We live by the word. We die by the word. This is the word of God. We live by the word. We die by the word. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Amen. Praise God in my spirit here. I need to just sit it out for a moment. Amen. Because you know what? The, the power of God, the spirit of God is so. Amen. Yes. Just want to yes. get excited. Yes. Amen. But hey man, there's a time and place for everything. Amen. Amen. So I believe last week, the last thing we talked about, amen, was some degree we are victims of deceivers. And the scripture wants us to be on our guard. Do not be deceived. We are not to allow those deceivers to lead us astray. To make us wonder about in error and sin. We are to resist them and see them for who they are. Deceivers working for the kingdom of darkness. So many are out presenting themselves as light. But they are actually working for the devil. Hallelujah. God desires is that all people repent and be saved. Amen. That is desire. Amen. That all people, nation, town, creed, doesn't matter what, he desires for all of us to repent and be saved. Amen. Second Peter 3 verse 9 says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promises as some men come slackness but is long suffering towards God not willing that any should perish but all should come to repentance so the desire of God is that some of us should come to repentance but all so Jesus Christ died for all of us that all our sins can be forgiven. And the world needs to know this. That he had paid the price already. It is all paid in full. We just need to accept him as who he is in our lives. As Lord of Lords, as King of Kings. He is our Savior. He died to redeem us and bring us back to our, our rightful place. What happened in the Garden of Eden? Jesus came and he restored us. We have already been restored, church of God. But we have something to do. We have a part to play. We got to make a conscious choice, a conscious decision to come to Christ and repent of our sins and our trespasses. Many in the church today, they pretend that they're not in the world anymore, but they're still in the world. They're still a part of the world. Their thinking is of the world. Their mind is not renewed in the world. And Paul reminds us that we are to renew our minds as becoming kingdom senses, as becoming saints. We must renew our mind. There must be a change. There must be something different about you. You can't be the same old, same old. There must be a change. Your friends, your companions, your wives, your children, everybody should be able to see that there is a change. When you meet God, look at Paul. What happened to Paul? When Paul met Jesus Christ at the Damascus Road, there was a change. The Bible says, it's the 
his tears from his eyes was removed. He actually started to see in the light. He started to see clearly who Jesus Christ is and what he was doing, the wrong he was doing, and he made a right about change. That's what it means to repent, is to make a hundred, uh, 360 degree, degree turn. Oh, hallelujah. That's what it means to make a change, to repent. You've got to change your whole thinking. Renew the mindset. We are not, we are born in the world, and we are living in the world, but we are not of the world. I think many of us, we missed it. Because we are living in this world, we think we are the world. But we are living in this world, but the psalmist said, this world is not my home. I am just passing through. Oh, hallelujah. That's why none of us are here in stone. They are here only for a time and a season. And the Bible says, if you live 70 years, you're good, not your lifespan, but if you go over that, it's by reason of strength. Oh, hallelujah. And many today don't want to die. But you got to understand, when you get to 70, you're an, under, you're an extended grace. Yes, sir. So we got to live our lives as much and as cleanly as possible so that the kingdom of God and the glory of God will be seen in us. The, the question of God's prayer is the kingdom. Jesus said the kingdom of God is in you. How can the kingdom of God be in you? The kingdom is huge, but the kingdom is righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. Amen. So you can understand why it dwells in you. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. It's the kingdom is what? Righteousness. Live right, live holy. Joy, have joy in the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Peace, Jehovah Shalom. He is my peace. It doesn't matter what's going on around you. It should not shake you. Because the peace that he has given to you is not according to the world, but according to the one that he gave, the one that surpasses all human understanding. When you're supposed to be mad, you're glad. When you're supposed to be sad, you're happy. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. How many Holy Ghost? To ask us all that to happen. But at the same time, the same time, the father of lies, oh hallelujah, the father of lies is out there deceiving. And that's what it says in John 8 verse 44, ye are of your father the devil, yes, and the lust of your father you will know. Church of God, we have some pastors, we have some leaders, they are working for the devil. Because the Bible says the, their father is the liar from the beginning. And he said what? The lust of your father you will do. And becoming saints, you would not know the things that you were doing before. If you have changed, if there is if the blood has reached your heart, there must be a change. Because the Bible says the blood washes whiter than snow. You are pure, you are clean. You cannot do the work. Of the devil. He was a murderer from the beginning and a poor not in the what? The truth. They ain't the truth. Oh, hallelujah. That's why today they're saying there is no ultimate truth. That's why all what is happening in this religion and all these religions around the world is because they're not accepting the truth of God's word. They're denying the truth of God's word. Why? Because they're living a lie here of the Father, the devil. But they dress as angels of light, deceiving. Yes, the Bible says they are out there like a roaring lion, but they are not the lion. Light, light. They are like the lion, yes. but they are not the lion. Yes. But they are out there seeking who they may devour. Yes. They are looking for an entrance, for a door that they can get into your life. Yes. I was sharing with a sister this, this week, and I was trying to help her to understand don't open no doors in your life that don't bring glory, glory to God. Because once you open one door, you start a slippery slope to open others. Young people in South East of Assembly, please don't open one door to the enemy. Because if you open one door, then you're going to start a slippery slope. One thing leads to another. You sin one time, you start to feel comfortable. You keep sinning and sinning and sinning and you, until the Bible says your heart becomes like a stone. Your conscience has become severe like what I am in means. You have no more sensitivity to the Holy Ghost. 
Sensitivity has left you. The Holy Ghost cannot convict you no more. When we have some Christians who the Holy Ghost cannot convict no more. They are living in sin and they refuse to accept the fact that they are sinners. They need to change their way. They need to repent. But the Bible says he wants us to repent of our sins and our trespasses. It is not too late. It is never too late to cry out to the King of all kings, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and say, Father, forgive me. Come on, he is our example and is dying. He was on the cross dying. And he reached and said, Father, Father, forgive them. His breath was leaving his body, church. That's the God that we are serving. Even at the point of your death, cry out to him. And he says he is faithful and trust to forgive us of our sins. We don't need to die in our sins. Jesus Christ already paid it. Don't be deceived, church of God. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Because there is no truth in him. When he said he lied, he lied of his own. For he is a liar and the father of hate. Yes. There are some pastors and some leaders who are professional liars. Oh, hallelujah. You come in the church of God, you come to the kingdom, and you're only in there to want them to do is to rip off God's people. You lie to them, and anything goes. You don't care about their soul. You care about their pocketbooks. We have been deceived, church. But we have to be careful according to the word of God. And that's why I encourage you to read the word. Because if I'm in error with the word, then you, I want you to be able to correct me. Amen. But if you don't know the word of God, you don't accept everything I say. I don't want you to accept everything I say. I want you to know the word of God for yourself. Build a relationship for yourself. And if I'm in error, you need to correct me. And I'm always open. For correction. But you gotta make sure you use the word. <laughs> Don't correct me based on what you feel or what you heard. Because you can have bad feeling. You can be sincerely wrong. So talk to me about the word. Prove it to me that I'm wrong in the word. Don't tell me about anybody else. Tell me about my constitution that I have given to live by. Yes, sir. And then I'll be stand corrected. Until then, all your peace. Glory. If you cannot come to me with the word of God and correct me by the word of God, guess what? All your peace. Because I stand on the word of God. I have no opinion. I want you to understand, church. I have no opinion. Here is my opinion. The word of God speaks. My opinion is not valid. That's why I like Brother Paul. Because when he was voicing his own opinion, he tells you it was his opinion. But when it was a command from God, he said it was, and it is, the word of God. This is my thought, but this is what the word of God says. Amen. Because the Bible talks about us with vain imagination, with our puffed up mind, who think that we have gone to school and university and college, and we come on knowing more than God. Huh? We are preachers who think they know more than God. When he is the author and the finisher of our faith and the word. Faith coming by hearing. And what do you hear? The word of God. Hallelujah. So in order to build your faith, you need the word of God. In order for you not to be deceived, church, you need the word of God. Many are getting rich today because we lack knowledge. People are sitting in their living room writing big checks, saying to buy some water. 
to buy a piece of cloth. Because we have been in a stage, in a age of deception. Yes, we got to study the word of God according to the word of God. Yes. God is still the only ultimate truth. Yes. This is the only ultimate truth. The Bible says his word will never change. Yes. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We have no opinion. We have nothing when it comes to the word of God. It is theocracy. It is the law of God. And no man can change it. You can change it if you think you can, but the Bible says every place that are written in this book will be on you. That's the word of God, church. If you change one word, how I take away from it? He said, every plague that has been written in this book will be on your life. You ever study the plague in, in Egypt and fear? Think of all those plagues and all the other plagues, the leprosy, and all these things that will come up with you. Because it's not happening right away doesn't mean it's not going to happen. God is a God of long suffering. That what he just says. He'll give you time. But there's a time when he's going to say, Your time has run out. Amen. Recall. He's going to recall you. Oh, hallelujah. Whether you like it or not, you got to go. Amen. You have no opinion. That's one thing. That one appointment you got to keep. Hallelujah. You can't send it back and say, Come tomorrow. When he comes, he said, I am here to take you, and that's it. Sometimes you get warning, sometimes you don't get hate. Oh, hallelujah. He deceived the very people who need to accept the truth. The very people that said they studied their theologians in the word of God, they themselves not even accepting the truth. This is as far as deception as God in the body of Christ. That even the ones who claim they study the word of God is still not accepting the the truth. The God of this age has blinded the minds of believers so that they cannot see the light and the glory of the gospel of Jesus Christ. They are in the church, but they're not seeing the light. They're still walking in darkness in the church. Because the Bible is for the church. It is not for the world, it is for the church. And today the church is to walk in darkness. Oh, hallelujah. So that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of God. This is what it said in 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 4. Whose minds the God of this age has blinded. Who do not believe lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God should shine on them. Oh, hallelujah. Sometimes you look at some people and you look at them and you say, you say you're Christian, you wonder what's going on in their lives. Because they have been deceived. Oh, hallelujah. The Bible presents a consistent picture of how sin and deception are related. What reveals is that they, the way we tend to think of deceit, well, it's a bit different from the way we see it. Spiritually speaking, deception is deeper than merely being tricked or lied to. Deception is more than just tricked or lied to. In order to be saved, one does not need any particular level of intelligence, special ability, or wisdom. All you need to do is come to a conscious decision that you need Christ in your life. You don't need to be a doctor. You don't need to be a lawyer. All you need is the understanding to know that Jesus Christ died for your sin and you accept him as Lord and Savior. That's all it takes for you to be in the kingdom of God. That's all it takes, church. You don't need no special ability to come to Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 28. This is a, a, a verse of scripture that many people use it in a deceptive way. And it said, there is neither Jews nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free.
there is neither male or female, for ye are all one in Christ. This verse of scripture has been used in such a wrong way so many times. Oh, hallelujah. What it really means is that all of us, we got to come to Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. We all have to come to Jesus. Jesus Christ broke down the middle wall of partition. We all need justification to Jesus Christ. Whether you are Jews or Gentiles, you have to come to Jesus. He is the door. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but to him. It means that none of us in Christ, we are divided. We are one in Christ. It doesn't matter what your knowledge, nationality is, uh, but you got to know Amen. that you know that we are one yes. in Christ. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Many use this scripture for many different reasons. If you look at the Old Testament, Old Testament days, there are some rituals that women could not do. There are some different things that women could not do in those days. But in this day, the Bible says we are all coming to Jesus. We are all in one in Jesus. It doesn't mean about the function. There is a difference that has given to the function. We are all in the body of Christ, but everyone has different function. But in the sight of God, we are all one. Amen. That's what it means. Hallelujah. It's not talking about function. If not, there would not be commandment given. 17 categories out of the over 1,200 commandment given to the New Testament church. Divided into 17 categories. For pastors, for bishops, for deacons, for wives, for husbands. It all, it's all divided for children. That's why the Bible says, children, obey your parents in the law. For this is right, not for kids. Amen. Seventeen different categories broken down into over 1,200 commandments for the New Testament church. And the Bible says, if we teach any of them, the least of them, then what? We're doing well. Amen. Just the least, not the greatest. One day we'll talk about that. Oh, hallelujah. But that's not where we are today. We're talking about being deceived. Amen. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. 1 Corinthians 1, verse 20 and 26 says, Where there is, where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has God made foolish the wisdom of this world? Hallelujah. Isn't it? Amen. 1 Corinthians 1, verse 20. And 26. For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise are called into the flesh, not many mighty, nor many noble are called. Right. Oh, hallelujah. Right. So that's why today you find noble people who think that they don't need Jesus. Huh? They think their wisdom yeah. and their knowledge yeah. is enough. But we need Jesus. Amen. In fact, mankind has an unfortunate habit of using increased knowledge to develop more sophisticated ways to sin. Amen. Because of man's knowledge today, there are now developed more sophisticated ways to sin against God. Huh? That's why the Bibles are not in the schools no more. Huh? That's why they don't have the, the Bible in the court out there. They used to be there. All that, wherever the Bible was represented, it's been taken down. They're taking God out of their life because why? They think they're so knowledgeable. <laughs> But that's a deception of the devil. The devil don't want us to know about God. The devil don't want us to understand who God is in our life. The devil is deceiving us that he wants to remove the very constitution, the very thing that will give you life. The very thing that will keep your life healthy and strong. They want to take it away. That's why the government can do all these crazy things. Legalizing marijuana, legalizing alcohol. These things are killing and destroying the nation. But yet the government legalizes it. And turn around charge to use it. 
So they're making money in other ways. They're making money when you buy into the most stocks, things, alcohol, cigarette, drug. They're in the most stocks, things, church. The devil is using it to make money of God's people. They get set limitation and then charge you and then destroy your family because they get impaired. They take your license. You can't drive to work. You can't go make a living no more. And then you don't get it. You try to go on welfare. They cut you off. They out to destroy you. You got to get smart. The Bible said you got to use the wisdom of God. If you look at the word of God, understand the word of God. He said we should redeem the times. We are in a very, very perilous time. We cannot be deceived and should not be deceived, church of God. God has forewarned us. That all these things are going to come to pass. We have no excuse, church, to fall in the trap of the devil. That's why the pastors today are trying to tell the people, don't read your Bible. They don't want you to be educated in the thing that is best for you. They want to control you. Amen. The Spirit of God, that should, they, it is the one that's supposed to be in control. Have you? The Bible says, "Great that is He that is in you, that He that is in the world." You need the Holy Ghost to direct your path. Amen. Man can't direct you; they don't know. Man don't know you. Oh, hallelujah! I was doing a study, and I recognized that men make computer, and we think that computer is so powerful. But think about it; it's man that make it. Who is more powerful? Who has a more powerful mind? A computer can only compute what you put in it. That's right. Glory. Glory. Amen. But we glorify in computer. But we need to glorify in the God of our age who gives the mind to make the computer and the knowledge to make the computer. Yes. Let's not be deceived yes. by the same thing that we suppose our dominion, yes. taking dominion over us. Dominated. It was created that we have dominion over it. But it is having dominion over us and many are dying daily. Drugs are killing off the nation. Now the, the, the government going after pharmaceutical companies that are making all these drugs that how many thousands and millions of people die for all these years and finding they can't do it. No, they start to feel guilty that we are killing off God's people. God brings ambition over the nation. And that's why they can come to the knowledge that they are killing off God's people and they need to do something about it. It is not their wish. They have been doing it for years. But God speaks and he needs something in the eyes of the people to open. He is the one that's in control. Hallelujah. He is the one that is in control. The key to understanding spiritual deception is the fact that we often choose what we want to believe rather than what we should believe. That's the problem. We want to believe what we want to believe. We don't want to believe what we should believe. It's not like you're easily deceived. You're prepared, you already set yourself up to be deceived. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. The key to understanding spiritual deception is the fact that we often chose what we want to believe rather than what we should believe, even in the face of evidence. Even when you have the evidence, you still refuse to believe it. Amen. You're setting yourself up Amen. for failure. God. You know that failure is predictable? Do you know that failure is predictable? <laughs> Look at the way you live your life and the choice you make, we know you set yourself for failure. Amen. It is predictable. Right. Success is also predictable. Right. <laughs> ah, you didn't know that, right? 
Success is predictable. Failure is predictable based on how you live your life. If you live your life according to the Constitution, you're doing well. I'm closing. Hallelujah. Even in the face of evidence, I'm going to close this one, this one work, and I will close here. Luke 16, verse 31. But he said to them, if they do not hear Moses and the prophet, neither will they be persuaded the one rise from the dead. <laughs> oh God, I close here. Even in the face of evidence, you choose to still do the wrong thing. We'll talk more about that next week, God's body. But here it is, the prophets, Moses, they spoke of all these things and the Bible, Jesus was talking to them and said, listen, even if one would raise from the dead and come back, you know what the story is about? Huh? When Lazarus and the rich man when he went down to hell and some fire started touching and he realized he lived his big life and hurt that they have to some bastards, you know that? They're going to get some misery in their life and they're going to have fire in this life. Not only life to come in this life, they're going to have some misery in this life because of the, the what their the lies and the deception that they're bringing to God's people. I heard one big pastor not calling in the name, confessing and openly and media. Oh, he has been deceived. He finally started reading the word of God the right way. He claimed he was always reading it the wrong way. But now he's reading the right way. He's making op open confession after he robbed God's people. Millions and millions flying aeroplane, private jets. Have how many mansion? Now he's confessing. <laughs> many more will go up to confess because they know the truth and they rip people, God's people off. And God is coming back to pay every man according to their work shall be. Some going to be paid in this lifetime. They don't realize the life they told and the money they make can't help them. They're going to see the money and they can't touch it. They're going to see the food and they can't eat it. They're going to see the bed and can't sleep in it. Because they have deceived God's people. God is going to take care of them even in this life. God is going to allow them and the world to see them, what they turned out to be. Because of deception and deceit of God's people. But next week we'll talk and more about it and we'll I want us to understand that we can set ourselves up for it. And that's what is happening. It's the church we're setting up ourselves for it. For being deceived. Because we want what the world uh, setting ourselves up to receive. Oh,